Here's a thought experiment. How would you feel about a movie playing in theaters in Canada called How to Blow Up an Abortion Clinic? Or what about How to Shoot Up a Church? Which, by the way, just happened a few weeks ago in Nashville, Tennessee. What about a movie called How to Blow Up a Mosque? I'm guessing you're not too comfortable with any of those, even if you are a free speech absolutist. But right now, in theaters across Canada, there really is a movie called How to Blow Up a Pipeline. Here's Cineplex's website. As you can see, it's being marketed to teenagers. Uh, there's ads for it everywhere on, on TikTok in particular. It's rated 14A. So teenagers can go to, to the movie by themselves if they're 14 or older. Cineplex is so proud of that. Here, uh, watch the movie's trailer for two minutes yourself. Hey everyone, welcome back to Boom Talk. Today, teaching myself to make a homemade blasting cap. And if this works, it'll be step one, in making our own improvised explosive. Might be headed to Texas for the winter. What's in Texas? This project. What kind of project? to stop the pipeline from being built on my property. Poisons the air, water. Damn, this place is sick. You guys cooking meth in here? You ready to start working? We have to show how vulnerable the oil industry is by hitting something big. Michael, what do you think the odds are we blow ourselves up? I don't really care. You know, we could blow the pipe at the hilltop, keep the oil from leaking. You're not actually thinking. I'm not thinking about it. I'm doing it. What if y'all do structural damage? Structural damage is kind of the point. This is destruction of federal property. Terrorism. American Empire calls us terrorists, then we're doing something right. If you're seeing this, let those who profit from mass death know their properties will be trashed. Three, two, one. They will defame us and claim this was violence or vandalism. But this was justified. This was an act of self-defense. Obviously, there's no scientific basis to the underlying thesis here. Pipelines do not poison the air, despite what they said. They, they're by far the safest way to move oil or natural gas around. The eco-terrorists here are obviously hypocrites, just like Al Gore or John Kerry or David Suzuki or Leonardo DiCaprio and the rest of them. They use oil and gas themselves for everything. Uh, they use things made from oil and gas and coal, plastic, steel, pretty much everything in modern life, but this is not an intellectual movie, it's an emotional movie motivating people to blow up a pipeline. This movie is targeted at teenagers and 20-somethings. You can see that by its style and its actors. It could not be clearer. It is pro-terrorism. They actually say that word in the movie. That YouTube trailer I just showed you has 1.5 million views alone. And I saw little clips of it everywhere on social media. I'm not sure how many people actually are going to go see the movie in a theater, but just the two-minute ad and, and all the social media clips, they pretty much do the job right there, don't they? The movie's playing across Canada, including, I checked, for example, in the heart of Calgary in Cineplex theaters there in the oil patch. Oh, and just glowing reviews from movie critics the critics love it. According to the movie review website, Rotten Tomatoes, 95% of critics love this movie. Now, only 73% of moviegoers do, which is still a lot. But it shows you the ideology of the Hollywood industry, doesn't it? Now, the movie was based on a book by this guy, Andreas Malm, who looks exactly like what you'd imagine he'd look like. He's a Marxist professor in Sweden. You know, I've been to Sweden... It's a pretty northern country. Its capital city, Stockholm, is one of the most northern capital cities in the world. 
59 degrees north latitude. For comparison, Whitehorse is 60 degrees latitude. That's how far north Stockholm is. Ottawa is practically tropical. It's 45 degrees north latitude, and we like to think it's a northern city. My point is, Andreas Malm and his whole country would freeze without fossil fuel. You cannot power Sweden through the dark winter with solar power. But he published a book called How to Blow Up a Pipeline, and now it's a movie. And funny enough, it's set in the United States. I mean, he's not stupid. He's like his fellow Swedish propagandist Greta Thunberg. They're Marxists, but they like making money. No one in America is going to pay to see a movie about Swedish teens blowing up something in Sweden. And the regime media couldn't be more excited about it. Here's the Globe and Mail, owned by Canada's richest oligarch. Their headline is Electric and Gripping Eco-Thriller. How to Blow Up a Pipeline is a Fast and Tight Cinematic Provocation. You know, the Globe and Mail actually called it a courageous movie. And they even complain that it's too politically soft. They say you'll be a better person for watching it. I'm serious. Let me quote a little bit. Is it controversial, even dangerous, to make a movie unambiguously urging illegal action? No more so than the thousands of films that squeal over wholesale murder or whose politics push the agendas of the American military. I'm not sure what the murder part he's referring to there. There are a lot of people killed in Hollywood movies, but I'm not sure if squealing about murder is uh, the same as encouraging it or the same as a two-hour propaganda course literally telling people to become terrorists. That was an excerpt from the Ezra Levant Show. I'm Ezra Levant. Every weekday I do a monologue about the topic of the day. Then I interview a fascinating guest either in studio or via Skype. And then I read your mail, whether it's fan mail or hate mail, which is sometimes even more interesting. This is on our premium service, though, called Rebel News Plus. Go to rebelnewsplus.com. It's eight bucks a month or less if you buy a whole year in advance. You get my show every weeknight, plus Sheila Gunn Reed's show every week. It's called The Gun Show. It's pretty amazing. You know, we rely on you because we do not take a dime from the government. In Canada, that makes us almost unique. So please help us out and help yourself to some great journalism at rebelnewsplus.com.